Hey everyone, welcome to Architecture for Thought. Today we will look at an AI plugin for Revit that assists with visualization. Yes, it exists. It's created by Evolve Lab. The software is called Virus. You can download it here. I will leave a link in the description. It looks like it supports versions of Revit from 2019 to 2023. And coming soon, they will have a version for SketchUp and Rhino. Also on this page, they show a couple of renderings that they've used using their software. They look amazing. And uh, down below, they show the subscription levels. With the free download, you get 15 days, 30 free renderings, which I'm sure we will go through all of during this video. They also have uh, some nice blog posts that explain how to set up the exterior renderings and interior renderings, which are really useful. And I will also leave links in the description. So let's jump right into it. Uh, on that blog post, they showed some things that they want you to set up the view with, such as changing the view to a realistic view, and then in the graphic display options, turning off smooth lines, shadows, uh, setting the lightings to specific parameters, and the background as well. I did all that, as you can see in this image. Uh, my computer is not extremely fast, and especially when I have all these trees loaded in the software, in the program, in this view, uh, it slows things down a lot for me. And I didn't notice that much of a difference from when I used this image versus this image, uncropped versus cropped, and shaded view versus realistic. So for this version, I'm just going to use this uh, since it's easier for me and on my computer. First time I opened up Revit, the, I was prompted with uh, whether or not I wanted to open Evolve Lab every time I use the, the software. I said yes, and I immediately saw the Evolve Lab tab at the top of the Revit software here. And off to the left here, you have the Start button, which will bring up the rendering pane. The first time I clicked on this, I had to put in a username, password, basically sign up and register uh, the software with, with my name for using the program. Uh, also on that blog post, they have more information about all these tabs and options, but I'll go through them really quickly here. The creativity strength basically gives some freedom to the AI based on the prompt that you enter down below here to add some creativity to the image based on your prompt. The style strength looks like it either keeps it more closely related to the native Revit image. So in this case, it would be this shaded view sort of with these style plantings down below. Uh, the more you increase it, the more it gets a photographic style, basically what you would expect to see from some of these more recent AI generated images. The width and the number of renderings we do not have access to. You get access to those through the paid subscription, but it looks like you'd be able to increase it to, uh, you know, whatever size width you want and run, you know, more than one rendering at a time, which would be nice. These options down here are for whether or not it is an interior or exterior view. This is an exterior, so I'm not going to select that. Turbo nature looks like it just pumps up the amount of nature that's going to be in the view. Atmospheric adds fog and some other kind of ambient textures and uh, qualities to the image. And is it an aerial view? This is slightly elevated, but based on some of the examples I've seen on their website, it's not necessarily a bird's eye view, so I'm going to leave that unselected. Then down below here is where you enter the prompt, and we'll plug in a couple things, but before I get to that, I want to show you some of the options I've already run using the same prompt and changing the creativity strength and the style strength to show you the difference uh, in images, basically, that it produces. So here I started off with a lower creativity, a slightly higher style strength. The prompt I used was a geometric architecture architectural pavilion with curved laminated wood beams, clear reflective glass, white metal panels, and ambient accent lighting during a vibrant, colorful sunrise during the summer on a beach. It was very lengthy, and I realized in some later test trials that I think the less words you have, 
the better. I'm pretty sure this is running on stable diffusion. I'll double check that and correct it if it's not, but you can expect the same type of results. So here, like I mentioned, a 65 creativity strength, 85 style strength. The next one, I wanted to just bump it all the way up and see what the results were. They were a little too extreme for me, uh, but I can see in some cases how that might work, especially for the lighting, it was much better. Uh, then I did the inverse, doing a higher creative strength and a slightly lower style strength. And that one was quite nice. I think it gave it a little bit of freedom and it kept it closer to the uh, Revit native kind of example. And just by the way, I was using the rendered, uh, or sorry, realistic view for these versions, um, which you know, it gave it a nice quality, but again, it wasn't that much drastically different. This is basically that rendered view that you're seeing here, the realistic view, and I bumped everything pretty far down. I didn't want to go down to zero to completely waste one of my renderings, uh, one of my free 30 renderings, but it was set at a 25 and 25, and it almost just looked like the native uh, Revit realistic view. So I won't be trying that again. Uh, 75 75 creative strength and style strength a pretty good balance of giving it some creative freedom and a nice realistic view uh, this one i liked so i think i experimented a little more with that after this uh, doing some different atmospheric effects so i changed the prompt in this version to a lakeside geometric architecture architectural pavilion during a cold snowy day and then last but not least, a futuristic building with vibrant colors, tropical beach, exotic landscaping kind of broke the sentence down into just some descriptive words that I had experimented more with stable diffusion. So I wanted to see if uh, it would take the prompt more like stable diffusion took and it seemed to like that better. So when I mentioned the simpler, the better, that's sort of how I mean. It's not exactly like Mid-Journey, where Mid-Journey, I think you can be a little more descriptive with your adding uh, widths and ands or withouts. Uh, this is kind of a simpler format. So anyway, we'll jump back into uh, doing another example for this. Um, we'll just kind of copy one of the th ones that we had earlier. We'll go to 75 and 75. I sort of like that. Turbo Nature is on. Atmospheric is on. And I'm going to jump over to one of my prompts and grab a new one, actually. Futuristic building, bamboo structure, beach, sunrise with native grass and plantings. I'm going to copy that, go back over to my prompt, paste it in here, and click render. And it's relatively quick. Uh, if you have this window open and you're plugging in different renderings, they will all sort of align down at the bottom here which is nice. Uh, I think a feature that I would like to see added in the future is when you select back on the image that it shows you where your creative strengths were and style strengths were, uh, basically what those levels were at. So we'll do it again here where we uh, bump up the style strength. Let's see, to like 95. And we'll take the creativity strength down to try and make it more aligned with the prompt just a 50 and we'll run one more rendering there and you'll see again relatively quickly it tells you the rendering times down at the bottom here um, definitely is staying a little closer to the prompt that i had but again when you select back to the previous one it keeps the creative strengths sorry creativity strength and style strengths where you currently have them it doesn't revert them back to where you rendered them at so anyway this is an example of the exterior views um, some pretty cool options but i also wanted to do an example of some interior views so here's another example of um, i wanted to do for interiors and maybe for more realistic architecture uh, that that isn't so conceptual so same thing i'll click on the start button it's going to bring up the window pane. Uh, you know, I didn't change all the settings like they had suggested, but 
the renderings were coming out just fine. So we'll bump this back down to 75, 75. I'm gonna turn the interiors on, keeping turbo nature off, atmospheric off. Is it an aerial view off? And I'm gonna go back to my prompts really quickly. And here I also tried, you know, a few different versions at the same setting. And it is nice for, uh, like I said, doing some quick versions of uh, material changes. So I'll do a couple examples here. I'll plug in the modern luxury bathroom with natural muted colors and ambient artificial lighting. For this one, I kind of wanted to match what the rendering, the original rendering was to see what it was going to come up with. And it did a nice job. I mean, I, I think it's definitely interesting to see some ideas <laughs> pop out. You know, it totally changed my background from a window that looks out to the exterior to some more bathroom elements. Um, and it changes the tile kind of at free will. But if we go back and plug in now something with some more specific uh, parameters for, let's say, the tile and the concrete floors. So I'll copy this, paste it back in here. You'll see that it actually does a good job at uh, following those suggestions, those parameters, at least at this creativity strength and style strength. And again, it's going to change as you vary those parameters uh, a little bit. But here you can see, you know, there are bright white wall tiles and concrete floors. So same thing with the cabinets. I don't think I have a prompt that, that changes those necessarily. But uh, last one we'll do for a quick example. Uh, just to show how it is staying pretty true to the prompt, uh, black wall tile and white polished floors. We'll jump back in here, paste it in. And again, the rendering times, these are, you know, popping in at less than 10 seconds, 12 seconds sometimes. Uh, maybe for interior, they seem like they're a little longer, but not always. Uh, black tile, we have polished floors, sure. So... Those are looking good. I think, um, is it a replacement for final renderings? No, I mean, not yet, for sure, soon. If we already have this software uh, as a plugin for Revit, I mean, we've been doing this, at least I have, for maybe six months now. Um, and I'm amazed to already see that this already exists, but uh, you know, it's not quite at the level that I would be comfortable presenting final images to uh, clients like this is here but definitely for you know quick iterations to show clients you know maybe i mean just to get the kind of idea down uh, ai is notorious for scrambling uh, human figures at least their hands <laughs> and things of that nature right now but uh, architecturally it it kind of gets the point across for for mood boarding and and uh, that type of effect uh, one last thing is you can right click and save the images here and uh, i did want to do one last test as sort of a bonus here uh, i'm really into using ai to support architectural tasks and so this is one step closer in my mind to to getting there so what i would like to do here is test and see how it treats uh, an architectural drawing through this software. So if I pump these up to 75, 75, interior, no, nature, no, none of these options. And I paste in here, construction drawing, blueprint, assembly diagram. Let's just see what it pops out for fun. Uh, this could be kind of the next step in plugging in the AI generated uh, software with Revit and this is interesting it's starting to give me some actual numbers here uh, you know that might pertain to it being an assembly diagram I'm probably going to blow through the rest of my trial renderings doing some tests on uh, some construction drawings like this here's another one it's definitely picking up on the blueprint I'll do another quick one uh, taking the creative strength maybe down a lot and doing the style strength up and then we'll do a, the inverse of that so let's render one more there again quick rendering times under six seconds that last one was so nice i mean it's taking my drawing i already had it kind of set up with these dashed lines and everything but 
Uh, it's definitely giving it kind of some style points. It hasn't tried too much to assign any, uh, you know, words or annotation to it. But again, I think these are things that will definitely come in the future as the AI program so software better understands uh, the objects and the components maybe that are embedded in, in the program. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful, useful to you guys. Uh, I know I will definitely be experimenting more with this. And yeah, curious to know your thoughts on this. So leave your comments down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.